The Hawks at home. There you see, getting ready for game time. But guess what? We all thought the Nets could turn this series around. It was a tight one again, 105 to 107. But guess who got away with it? Damari Carroll and his Hawks balling out of control. The re real thing I want to talk about, though, is Darren Williams. Darren Williams went two for eight. This is a guy that has the handles of an elite point guard, the jump shot of a good shooter. He's a big body. He's hard to handle. Dan Gladman. Why is Darren Williams such an enigma? Why can't he keep it together? Th this is Darren Williams. This is who he is. This is who he's been through his career. And I actually uh, I disagree with something you say there. I don't think he's a good shooter. I never did, and that was actually the, one of the questions about him when he came out of university, out of University of Illinois. It's, he's not really that good of a shooter. Um, he's been inconsistent his, his entire career. And, you know, he's still contributing in, in these playoffs, and the Nets are right there. I think the Nets are going to win game six and extend Atlanta to seven. But this is who Darren Williams is. He, he can get hot from three and hit his shots, but other times he's, he's missing and it costs his team. Meg McPeak, there's a point where we were talking about Chris Paul and Darren Williams as the two best future Hall of Fame point guards. But their careers have kind of gone diverted past, but neither of them really reached that ceiling. What is the problem with Darren Williams? Why can't he? Honestly, Dan, like, hit every point, like, perfectly. He just, this is who he is. He's, as Dan, Cla Dan said, not a good shooter, never was a good shooter when he was in, in, in Illinois. Is he overweight? I don't think he's overweight, but he's, <laughs> he's bordering he's and playing guy. with it. He's but at the same time, he, also, too, like, you have to take into account, he's, he's taller for a point guard, so you're going to be a little bit heavier. And I think that plays into his ability when he is playing well, when we do see the Darren Williams that we saw with Carlos Boozer in, in, in Utah when he was um, starting to make that push to get to the Hall of Fame and be the possibility of a Hall of Fame point guard. But now, as soon as he made that change and got all that money for Brooklyn, it's sort of like he's like, all right, I got my money, now I'm out. Uh, Darren, Darren Williams is responsible for false advertising when you think about it. And one guy who, who can testify to this is Paul Pierce. Right. <laughs> Paul Pierce went to Brooklyn with the anticipation of playing with Darren Williams. And Paul Pierce said he, he thought that Darren Williams was an MVP caliber player. That he wouldn't have to push him and drive him. He'd have that internal motor. You know, the, right. the question is, was, was Paul Pierce right for calling out Darren Williams? Because, I mean... I think uh, Paul Pierce right now... Yes is perhaps one of the smartest dudes out there. I was going to say, <laughs> yeah, you can't, yeah. Every time he says Agreed. something, he's right. <laughs> uh, we don't want to admit this. It's Paul Pierce. He's public enemy number one. <laughs> but if he, he knows things that we don't know. So if he can say something, he's a, he's a veteran. So he's not afraid to speak and he speaks, his mind and, he speaks and tell the truth. Yeah. And most of the time, the you don't truth. get the answer from the younger players. He doesn't care as much anymore about what people think. So he's, if he says you know what, Darren Williams is this, this, and this. I'm going to nod my head and say, yep, Paul Pierce is right. Okay. Well, listen. I'm with well, you on that. Hey, I, I just want to point something out. Just a quick thing for me. I've never seen an uh, MVP caliber <laughs> point guard flip so bad and become so but he, bad. Okay. And Kyle Lowry turned from, like, you know, a fringe player to a superstar point guard. That's weird to me. But let's talk about Kevin Love for a second. Kevin Love out four to six months after Kelly Olenek tried to dislocate his arm from his entire okay. body. For Poor the guy. Cavs now, what does this mean? No Kevin Love, does this significantly uh, detract from your thoughts as the Cavs as a potential Eastern Conference and NBA champion, Miss McPeak? Yes. Yeah. 100%. So no, ch no chip for Braun? Uh, it's going to be, uh, I'm not saying no championship, but that road just got a whole of a whole lot harder. A whole hull of a lot harder. <laughs> <laughs> it got a whole lot harder for him simply because Kevin Love was becoming, after that game four, and then going into the game when and you said tried to dislocate. He <laughs> did dislocate that shoulder. It's probably one of the grossest things I've ever seen. The but poor guy. I think that he was getting his footing back under him and being able to give the Cavs something that they don't have, which is a, a, a forward that can stretch the floor. Because now you've got to look at James, John, J James, um, Jones? James Jones, who hasn't really played a lick in the playoffs, nope. and you're going to expect him to come off the bench and hit shot after shot because that's he what will. they need He's now. That, that, that's the, exactly. Exactly. That's the danger exactly. of James that's Jones. That's the danger look, that they play into. But at the same time, I think Kevin Love not being available is going to play into the hands of Chicago should they get past Milwaukee. And San Antonio if they play them. Yeah. Listen, I want to throw something else at you, Dan. Um, the Cavs general manager was disappointed in J.R. Smith for his actions when he took a cheap shot. Yes, right? we all are. But if he got suspended for two mom, games. I <laughs> um, but, I mean, does he even have a right to be suspended, I mean, to, to be disappointed in, in, in him? Because J.R. Smith is J.R. Smith. He's done this stuff. But here's, here's the, the one question. J.R. Smith is finally on a winning team and he still can't get his act together. 
What what will it take to get J.R. Smith to buy into? You can't punch people in the face. He's not. He, a leopard doesn't change his spots. He is who he is. Well, we just is. talked about a leopard to change his spots. We talked about Darren Williams. We right, talked about no, Kyle Lowry. The, all these guys, everyone is consistent to who they are. We all are. I mean, people can only change so much, but you really, the essence of who you are is who you are. And it's the exact same case with, with basketball players. And we're seeing it time and again. Look at the Spurs with Tim Duncan. He hasn't changed either. J.R. Smith, they know he was a hothead. They're lucky he only got suspended for two games. Yeah. It could have been five or ten. Um, meanwhile, I still think the Cavs are still the front runner in the East because the Bulls have their issues as well. They think and J- here, well, shame on East, everybody for the East the is not situation. very strong, as we know. So even without love, I expect them to get to the final. Cleveland is still the favorite. Agreed. Win, I say probably not without love. Okay. All right. That's it. Even with them, they you weren't they're not San Antonio. We gotta go to. Hey, we're running out of time. We want to save some stuff for the next block because we gotta talk about some other guys who I don't think are winners. <laughs> when we return on the Hangout, we gotta talk about the not so dynamic duo of Chris Paul and Blake Griffin. They can give you a lot of points, they can make a lot of highlights, but will they ever get to the second round of the NBA playoffs, or even the first round this year? Hang out!